Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. This is Jeffrey with the Christian Overwatch. Today, I would like to talk to you about circular reasoning within evolution. But before we get into defining what is a circular reasoning, let's first define what we mean by evolution. Evolution has six major points under evolution, and we need to define those quickly before we move on. Cosmic evolution. The first one here is the Big Bang, the origin of time, space, and matter. Chemical evolution, they say hydrogen was produced in the Big Bang. How do you get all of the other elements? Stellar and planetary evolution, the Big Bang throws a bunch of dust out into the universe. How do you get stars and planets to evolve from that? Organic evolution, how do you get life from non-life? Macro evolution, this is the one most people think of when they think of the term evolution. This is how to get that single-celled organism to evolve into all of the life we see on Earth today. And lastly, we have microevolution, more accurately described as a change within kinds. This one is separated from the rest of the list because this is the only one that we actually observe. This is you have big dogs, small dogs, they're all dogs. You can selectively breed them to different traits, and some are have different traits than others, but they're still still they're still a dog. Uh, big horses, small horses, still a horse. Um, so now that we understand what evolution is, let's understand what circular reasoning is. Circular reasoning is a logical fallacy wherein something is explained by itself, basically. Um, a equals B because B equals A. Okay? Perfect example of that is the how fossils are dated. Fossils are dated by the strata in which they are found. The strata in which they are found are dated by the fossils that they contain. That is a circular reasoning. Strata are dated by the fossils and the fossils are dated by the strata. Okay? Before we move on to the next point, we need to understand a major flaw in which evolution has when it comes to analyzing data. That is that the first problem is that evolution is assumed to have happened. Okay, When you assume something before you come to your conclusion, it often skews your results. Your conclusions are often faulty because you went into it with a preconceived notion. All right. So if evolution is assumed to have happened, well, your results are going to be a little flawed. Now, we're going to talk here about Tiktaalik for a second. That's this little guy right here in the middle. Okay. A fossil was found which appeared to contain aspects that resembled both a fish or water-dwelling animal and a land-dwelling animal. Okay. Therefore, because they assumed that evolution already happened, they saw this as a transition fossil. Now you can line all these up in order, but without evolution, that doesn't mean anything. All right, let me let me show you what I'm talking about. We know Tiktaalik is a transition fossil because evolution happened, and we have proof that evolution happened because we have transition fossils. They're arguing in a circle. One cannot exist without the other. All right, that is a logical fallacy. It is circular reasoning. Now, an example of this that I have come up with is I know that ducks are turning into beavers. Now you're going to think that's a little ridiculous, but watch, I have proof. If I go into this with the assumption that ducks can turn into beavers, and then I go, look, I have proof. A platypus. A platypus has a bill like a duck. See, they have a bill like a duck. And it has a tail like a beaver. See, beaver tail. It's halfway between a duck and a beaver. Well, see, if I assume that this transition is possible, then this conclusion I draw makes sense. The problem is, if you take away that assumption, this entire argument falls apart. Okay, You cannot base science on assumption, otherwise it's not science. So, oh, I just changed that. There we go. Um, so that is not science to enter into it with an assumption. You cannot first assume that evolution happened and then try to prove that evolution happened. Your results are going to be skewed and you're going to have circular reasoning. It's not going to work. Um, and your results are going to be wrong. 
So, and this is completely disregarding the fact that no fossil can be used as proof for evolution. I saw that picture and thought it was quite hysterical. Evolution, we have the fossils, we win. Well, the problem is that no fossil can't possibly be used as proof for evolution because all you know is what you can observe, what you can test, and what is repeatable. Um, what can you observe about that fossil? Well, you can observe that it's dead, and it's in the ground, so you know it died. Um, that's about it. Do you know it had kids? No. Do you know that it's it had different kids? No. Do you know that it was different than its parents? No. All you know really know is that it died. Okay. So you can't use that as proof for evolution. You can't say, like up here, oh, where to go? Sorry. You, even though you can line things up in a nice little order and it looks like it makes sense, you don't know that this guy is related to this guy. Just because they look similar doesn't prove anything. You first have to have the assumption that it happened in order to prove that it happened. So I hope that makes sense and you understand more how circular reasoning is used to prove evolution and how that really is a logical fallacy. So thank you very much for watching. Take care and have a wonderful day.